whenever you're talking about the Lord and when you're talking about Jesus there's nothing thrills the soul more than Jesus. Jesus amen there's only one message worth sharing with others and that is the love of our God that our sins are forgiven and we've been washed in that precious blood of the Lamb and oh what joy and excitement and expectation comes when we know that we are redeemed, when we know where we're going, amen? amen, it's great and it's mighty. And Lord, we thank you today. We give you glory today that you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. And every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. But right now in this place, we choose you. We believe you. We believe in you and we believe you. That your promises are yes and amen. That it, where two or three are gathered together in your name. That there you are in our midst and you are here just like you promised. And Lord, the thrill that we come together is not in each other, but when we see Jesus in each other. When we know that we are bound together with those cords of love. That we are one body. That there is one church, one body. That God's wonderful people. Because you are in us and we are in you. We are the redeemed of the Lord. We are the ambassadors of Christ. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. You have set Jesus. us apart, a holy nation, Hallelujah. a royal priesthood, Hallelujah. a peculiar Jesus. people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Let's rejoice and celebrate who our God is today. For he is still the same. Hallelujah. Jesus.
because what a comfort and what a joy and what a, a peace it is to know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah.
singing I believe God's promises are true that's a testimony to the world but let's turn it to him today because he said all all God's promises are yes and amen in Christ amen so we can say Lord I believe do you know that faith pleases the heart of the father it says, without faith, it is impossible <coughs> to please the Lord. Jesus. So when we tell him, I believe your promises are true, it delights the very heart of God. So let's sing it to him with all of our being today, not from our lips, not from our head, but from our very innermost being. Jesus. With all that we have. We can say, my God is faithful. My yes. God is true. And his word <clears throat> endures forever. Amen. Amen. It endures. So no matter what people say, no matter what they do, the word of God endures. It endures. It endures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will never pass away. Lord, let that revelation rise in us today and let the joy and the knowledge of your faithfulness overflow in us today and drive out all fear and doubt. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I believe your promises are true. Thank you. 
provider. You are my protection, oh God. You are my rock. You are my refuge. You are my strength, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are my healer, my deliverer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, you are the very air that I breathe. You are the lover of my soul. my joy. determined about what's going on around us that he is the anchor of our soul that he remains steadfast even in the midst of the storm he is mighty he is great hallelujah our God is on the throne Praise and he Lord remembers God. his own and Jesus oh, is making intercession you, for us hallelujah Hallelujah, what a joy it is. How God, what a joy it is to know that we're not on our own. Hallelujah, we are never on our own. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. glory. The dark clouds may come, but your light still shines. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to my God. Dark clouds may gather. Stay, amen. But still, your light shines through. I will praise you, Lord. Your Holy Spirit gently guides me and brings sweet comfort to my soul. Yes, the dark clouds may gather. I'm not moved.
says there that my hands may grow weary, yet I will cleave to the sword. And I wrote this song in a very difficult storm. But this was my testimony. And I heard Reinhard Bunke say that no matter how weak you are, if you've got a hold of that sword, which is the word of God, you are coming out victorious. Amen. 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 And I took a hold of that word and I said, Lord, your word, your sword, I will cling to it and I will not let go because this one thing I know, I am fully convinced that you are faithful. You are the mighty God and there is none like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I turned from the weakness and there was a shout of praise come up within my spirit. Hallelujah. And I knew I'm coming out victorious. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Lamb of God. If you've got a hold, if your hands, even though you're on your knees, it says even though I'm on my knees, I'm standing. Because if you're grounded and rooted in Christ, then you're standing on the rock that shall not be moved hallelujah that rock which shall not be moved it is the only wall the wall of salvation that is the only wall that has a foundation that cannot be shaken and we are built into that wall we're living stones Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help us to take it in today that we are grounded and rooted in Christ. And we shall not be moved because you are the rock. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory. Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. Let's sing it again because I know that's your testimony too. The wind, Jesus says, the wise man builds his house upon the rock. And when the wind and the rain and the storm comes, he shall not be moved. He will still be standing. Hallelujah. And the wind has come, the storm has come, but you're still standing. Hallelujah. For nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can laugh at the storm. We can shout hallelujah in the midst of a storm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The dark clouds may gather all around me. Not me. Bye. 
Brokenhearted, you came to set the captives free. So I ask you, oh God, that that boldness would rise up in our hearts, that we would not be ashamed of this gospel, but that we will be the ministers of fire that you have called us to be, because this is a lost and a needy world. And Lord, you have given us a precious message, you have given us a testimony. And Lord, we know that we were nothing before you find us. And what you have given us, Lord, is more than tr gold and more than silver. It is more precious than anything this world can offer. And Lord, we want to serve you in these days. We want to give you glory. We want to give you honor because we know, Lord. 
when the enemy would say, you have nothing to give, you have nothing. And he would try to put fear in our, our hearts and fear of the people. We will rise up and say, no, I will not fear the people. I will not fear their faces. Because the Lord my God is great and greatly to be praised. And he has never failed me yet. He has given me a power and a, and, a, and a strength to be his witness. He has enabled me. It says he has made us well able ministers. And you may say, but I've been through so much. And maybe you're afraid. Maybe you're afraid to speak out, but the Lord is saying, I have made you a well able minister. As I was with the three Hebrew children in, in that fiery furnace, so shall I be with you. As I was with Daniel in the lion's den, so shall I be with you. Thank you. Hallelujah. This little song, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Maybe that's where we're at. We're still learning, and praise God, we'll still be learning until the day we leave this world to trust Him. But it says, They that trust in the Lord, they shall not be confounded. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we're singing this song to you through it all. You've been there. You've been by my side all the way, and I know you're never going to leave me. You're never going to forsake me. And as we sing this, just settle it in your heart that you will not be silent. You will declare the word of God. You will be that minister of fire that he has called you to be. Hallelujah.
been spending some time on the grace of God and on the new creature in Christ according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. But we want to talk more about the rights and the privileges of the new creatures in Christ. About our place in Christ. The New Testament teaches 134 times it's mentioned in Him, in Christ, and in whom. That number I got from a number of Bible comedies, I never counted it, so I'm just taking it. I know it's mentioned a lot of times. And once we're born again of the Spirit of God, we are new creatures in Christ. We are in Christ. The Word of God talks about being in Christ, in Him, and in whom. And it also talks about putting on Christ. So Christ with us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. We'll read a verse or two from Ephesians 5, reading from 14. This the Lord only gave me in the meeting this morning, so I haven't had a lot of time to look at it. But no doubt it's tied into what he wants us to talk about. Corinthians 5, verse 14, Wherefore he saith, God saying, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Before we came to Christ, we were dead and trespasses and sons. We were asleep or unawares to what all was going on around about us. We are unawares how far down the road to hell we were, depending on religious rituals. But religious rituals will not get us to heaven. Jesus Christ said, He is the way the truth and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by him. So we can depend on religious rituals and go to hell. We need to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, because the Word of God says that they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We will be redeemed. We will be washed in the precious blood of Jesus. So we how to awake and be saved, and then sometimes it's simple to sleep rather than walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit. And the Lord saying, Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee the light. The light's there, but we got to reach out and take it. Salvation was there, but we had to repent and receive it. There's nothing automatic in the salvation of God. We got to receive it by faith. There's no alternative. We can talk about something, but we must reach out by faith to the Lord and receive it. We were singing about the dark clouds, but the light was still there. Did we put our minds on the, on the dark clouds or were we thinking about the light? Because we have been brought into the light. We have been brought out of the kingdom of darkness into God's kingdom of light. There's always a coming out before there's a going in. Just like the children of Israel had to be brought out of Egypt before they could go in to the promised land. We got to come out of the things that we were living on before we met Christ. We got to come out of all those things, the world, the flesh, and the devil, and start to believe the Lord. 
See then that ye walk in circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. We walk according to the Lord and to his word. And being filled with the Spirit of God, we walk as wise, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. We need to be redeeming the time because the days are evil. There's people and they're not making it. They're dependent on religious rituals. They're dependent on false doctrines. They're dependent on the lies of the devil. But we have got the truth and we need to share the truth. We need to rise from the dead and Christ shall give us light. We need to walk in that light. We need to share that light. Because we have to redeem the time because the days are evil. I remember in my young Christian days and reading the Old Testament and how evil things were going on and how evil times were. And I thought to myself, that's terrible. But we can see it all around us today. Such evil going on, corruption on high places, corruption on government, corruption on the leaders of churches. And I'm not talking about the Church of Christ. I'm talking about the religious organization. Corruption all around us. Prime Minister stands up, says one thing, does another. But we know Christ and he says what he's going to do and he will do it. Amen. We know that his truth is powerful. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And that's really what we're, these uh, lessons that we're having now is knowing what the will of God is, knowing what the grace of God is, knowing what salvation is, knowing why Jesus went to the cross, knowing what the will of God is. So many people and they're, and they're preaching things of it. Is this the will of God? The word of God tells us what his will is. Tells us in the Apostle of Peter, God's not slack concerning his promises. And he's not warned that any should perish, but all should repent and come unto him. That's the will of God. But we know even from the teaching of Jesus, people went to hell. That wasn't the will of God. That's where the doctrine of the sovereignty of God goes astray and leads people astray. God has the power to be sovereign. But he made us with a free will. And we got to understand that. That everything that comes along, we don't accept it as the will of God. We want to know what the will of God is. We're not going to walk as unwise, but we're going to be walking on the understanding of the word of God. What the will of the Lord is. What is the will of the Lord for us believers today? That we are redeemed. And to put it all in three small headings. Sun, sickness, and poverty. We are redeemed from sun, sickness, and poverty. That's the word of God, and we'll prove it over these days as we dig deeper into what God wants us to walk on. We want to walk in the will of God. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. There's many people today that claim to be born again and walking with Christ, yet they're still dependent on alcohol to make them feel good. The Word of God said here, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. 
There's many people today, and they're after alcohol and drugs and all sorts of things, looking for a high. But I can tell you from the Word of God, there is no high like the Most High. If you want lift it from the burdens of the day, call upon the name of the Lord. If you want set free, call upon the name of the Lord and be filled with the Spirit. Now there's many signs in the Word of God of people who are filled with the Spirit. Some churches will tell you the evidence of being filled with the Spirit is speaking in tongues, and so it is. But you see, other churches will tell you what we're going to read here, and that is true too. So is one right and the other wrong? No. Both are recorded in the Word of God. Be filled with the Spirit. In other words, being continually walking in the fullness of the Spirit. If we're looking back to some experience we had in the past, been baptized in the Holy Ghost, if that's all we have, we have nothing. Being filled with the Spirit, if you read through the book of Acts, the, the apostles were filled many times. And we need to be filled daily with the Spirit of God. But be filled with the Spirit, speak unto yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. There's that attitude of praise and worship bubbling up on us when we're filled with the Spirit. There's that attitude of servanthood when we're filled with the Spirit. There's that attitude of loving with the mind of Christ. And through Bible holiness is living a life that's similar to Jesus because we've got the mind of Christ. That's what through Bible holiness is. We're sanctified at the new birth. We're set aside. But we grow in it. And Jesus said to the Father, Sanctify my people. He said, I sanctify myself. And then he says, Father, sanctify my people by your word because my by your word because your word is truth. We are sanctified by the truth of the Word of God as it draws us closer. The word sanctify means to be set apart. So when we're born again of the Spirit of God, we're set apart from the world. We're not in the world. Or we're not off the world. We're in the world, but we're not off it. We're living for Christ. Verse 20 says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I remember talking to a brother in the Lord. He's a pastor. The postman come, delivered a tax bill, and I said, Praise God. He said, What are you praising God for? You got a bill. I said, I'm giving thanks always. If we can't thank God and the, the bill comes, how are we going to thank God whenever he pays it? We live in that attitude of praise and worship. And that attitude of praise and worship brings us into that place where we will be giving thanks always. It doesn't say for good things, it says for all things. Unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have an attitude because the mind of Christ. We have an attitude because we're filled with the Spirit. And that's an attitude of praise and worship. 
And no matter how bad things may look, we can give thanks whenever we begin to walk in the knowledge of the will of God. I remember a short time after I was saved, things were pretty tough and circumstances were not in my favor. And sitting in my bedroom one night, nobody else in the house, and the devil was painting a real bad picture, and I was sitting looking at it. Come to the near enough the place where I thought, well, we can't go on, so we've got to go back. And no doubt God was trying to get my attention, to get it off that picture that the devil was painting. But the front door got a knock. And I went down and opened the door, there was nobody there, but out onto the street there were the one on Tugmore Street. Went back to my bedroom, and then I could hear the voice of God. An angel must have knocked that door, because my mind was so fixed upon the defeat that I couldn't hear the voice of God. And the Lord spoke to me, told me an address to go to that been praying all evening that I would come and pray with them. So I learned that night the dark clouds were gathering. They're trying to keep us from hearing the voice of God. They're trying to steal the devil's trying to steal and he's used dark clouds. He's used circumstances. So I got myself tidied up and headed and drove up onto this yard. The man come running out and said, we're almost given up, we thought you weren't coming. The devil's gathering black crowds. Somebody somewhere needs help. And the devil's trying to cut you off. That woman was almost blind that night. She only knew me by my voice. The next day, as they come over what they call the Houston's Hull on the Maharan, the Korean Road. And the northern bank was where it used to be. And she come over that hill about three quarters of a mile, or between half a mile and three quarters of a mile, she could read the, the words Northern Bank. See, there was people calling upon the Lord. And the devil was trying to take me out of circulation. So I learned when black, dark clouds begin to gather. Don't look at them because the light's still there. The light's still there. See, we don't love unto ourselves, we love unto Christ. And God was glorified. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. We're submitting ourselves not only to God. We're submitting ourselves not only to the anointing of the Holy Spirit, but we're submitting to each other, to one another. Standing in the gap for each other. Praying for each other. Pray for one another that ye may be healed. So we're submitting ourselves to God and to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives 
be to their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of the word. That he might present to you himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man other yet hated his own flesh, but nourished, cherished it, even with the Lord the church. For we are members of his body. What love and respect. Jesus has for his church. And we need to have that love and respect for each other. We are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. We can see from this picture the love and the reverence that Jesus has for his church. That's why he could make that bold statement that Jesus, not Peter, Jesus would build his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And you and I as the children of God, we can face every circumstance known because we're part of the body of Christ, the gates of hell. What does that mean? That means every plan of sin, every plot of sin, cannot prevail against us. That's who we are. We're in Christ. We're in his precious church. And we serve a precious God. And we fellowship with precious brothers and sisters. And we spread the word of Christ. Because we've been awakened from the dead. And we've risen up. And we have light for ourselves and we have light for each other. We have light for ourselves and we have light for our workmates and our neighbors. Because they need to see the light. And they need to walk in the light. So if we go back to Ephesians 2. We're intended to start, but we must always be open to the movement of the Spirit of God. It's not our plans that counts, it's the plan of God. Ephesians 2, reading from verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. When you look in the mirror every morning, and when I look in the mirror every morning, I'm looking at the workmanship of Jesus Christ. 
I'm not working, looking at somebody that's dead because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. We're looking at somebody that's alive because of what Jesus done on the cross. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God before ordained that we should walk in them. Rem Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh are called on circumcision, but that which is called the circumcision and flesh made by hands. You see, that is the religious ritual. It doesn't do any good. It's by faith in Jesus Christ. That at the time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. We as Gentiles here today were saved because of the new covenant of grace. And there's false doctrines going about and they're hindering. Because we don't have to go back to the tradition of the Jews to be saved. But the Jews have got to leave behind the tradition of the Jews and call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. I have no desire to go back to religious organization. My only desire is to walk in the presence of God, to walk in the plan of God. No longer want to go back to be without God in the world, without hope. And verse 13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh, by the blood of Christ. Because the blood has been applied, we can say, we are made nigh to Christ. He's with us, he's on us, and we're in him. For he is our peace. So whenever circumstances and thoughts we try to come along to hinder our peace. We don't accept those thoughts or circumstances. We can say, Jesus is my peace. And we declare it and we stand on it. We refuse to worry because Jesus is our peace. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So anything that would try to hinder our peace, we refuse it. For he is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of perdition between us. I know I don't have to go back to the tradition of the Roman of the Israelites. Because I'm redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contain an ordinance for to make in him, to make in himself of twain, in other words, two, one new man, so maketh peace. He took the Jews and the Gentiles, and he went to the cross and he shed his blood. And we got to go to Jesus, we got to go and have that blood applied to wash us from all unbred sin. And the Jews has got to come the same. So if anybody's at you about these hellish doctrines, tell them to go and read the Word of God. Because we are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. 
and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. We are recon reconciled unto God in one body by the cross. And came and preached peace to you which were far off to them that were not. Apostle Paul was sent to the, the Gentiles. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. We don't have to feel like an orphan. We have access because we're born again of the Spirit of God to the Father God. We can approach the throne of God because we have been redeemed. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles, prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the built and fitly framed together growth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. The Spirit of God is dwelling in us, and we're built together. We're growing unto a holy temple in the Lord. The nonsense that has been preached for years about chipping and chopping and the potter having to destroy and cut off and help us to put in to the place that God has for us in his church is a nonsense because we're born again of the Spirit and we grow and we develop, we walk in sanctification and we expand because the mind of Christ is within us. And we're not having to be chipped and chopped to fit somewhere that's an excuse for the devil to come and to hinder the people of God. We grow into the place that God has for us. Growing unto a holy temple in the Lord. We're growing in the Lord. We're developing in the Lord. Hallelujah. There's only one way to begin to walk on our rights and our privileges as born-again Christians, and that is to make ourselves available to the Holy Spirit. When we begin to make ourselves available, we will take over we will take our righteousness and our privileges and then we will be active in the body of Christ. Whatever our call may be, that's who we are. In Ephesians 4, talking about Christ, Ephesians 4 verse 4, there is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called and one hope of your calling. We're all called today. We're in Christ today because we've been called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Well, most people understand what one Lord is and one faith, but when it comes to one baptism, there's a lot of confusion amongst Bible teachers. Some say if you're baptized in an infant, that's the one baptism. Some say if you go through the, the believer's water baptism, that's one baptism. Others say that's where the Pentecostals get it wrong because if you're baptized as a believer, 
through what? And then you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that that's true baptism. So you see how confusion it can get when you don't understand the Word of God. The one baptism that it talks about here, whenever we are baptized unto Christ at our salvation, we're baptized unto Christ at salvation. And that can only happen once. And I haven't time to get into all the scriptures today, but hopefully they'll fit in somewhere along the line. But that doesn't mean that once you're baptized unto Christ, you can't be lost. Because the Word of God does not teach that. And that will be explained. There's many scriptures. Hebrews 6, Hebrews 10, and 2 Peter 2. So we're not going down that line today, but we'll do that on another day. Because it's important that we understand the word. There's one baptism. We're baptized unto Christ once. And because of our free will, things can happen. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Jesus gave us all. There was no limit to Jesus, he gave us all. And there's no limit to the grace of God. Anything is compared to the measure of Christ. There's no limit to the, the grace that we have received. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? But he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Now we don't go down the line of the word of faith teaching that Jesus was defeated at Calvary and the devil tempted him and tortured him in hell. That's not what it's talking about. Jesus was victorious on the cross. There is no question about that. He went into paradise, the lower parts of the world. And he preached salvation to the sense of God. Because until Jesus entered in as the final sacrifice, the saints of God could not go to heaven, but they were in paradise. We read about that in Lazarus and the rich man. And he went down there and he preached the gospel to them. And earlier on there, in verse 8, it said he gave gifts unto men. What were the gifts that Jesus gave to men? We have the gift of the Father, which was the Son. We have the gift of Jesus, which was the Holy Spirit. But what are the gifts of Jesus to the church? The Holy Spirit gives gifts, so that's the three covered. But it says here, he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Earlier on we read that the church was built upon Jesus, the prophets and the apostles, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. But we read here that he's given some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. And everybody in the church may not take up that office, but they will follow that line of ministry. And the reason that he's given the fivefold ministry is for the perfecting of the saints 
In other words, bring on the sense, bring on his people to maturity. And the reason that we need to come to maturity is for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith. Jesus wants us to study the Word of God and we'll all come in unity of faith. The Psalms tell us where the brethren dwell together in unity there, the Lord commands a blessing even life evermore. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the faith, unity in the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, unto the, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, if we don't understand the grace of God, this will dishearten us. But when we understand the grace of God, this will not dishearten us. When we understand the graces of God, that will know that it's possible that we will come unto that mature man or woman under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We will be developing on this until the day we leave this scene of time. So we never think we have made it. We're still learning and we're still pressing on with the things of God. Therefore we are henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wound of doctrine by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wit to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, we grow up unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body joined, fitly joined together, and compacted by that for every joint supply. See, we need to be joined, uh, Supplying with the impact that we have. Every joint supplieth. Every one of us has something to bring to the body of Christ. According to the fact you're working in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Every one of us is responsible for bringing the body of Christ to that place of edifying and love reaching out and touching others. I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding darkened, there's the darkened clouds, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, ye put off the former conversation, the old man which corrupt according to this deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And you put on the new man, that's the new creature, which after God is created in righteousness and through holiness. As I said before, through holiness is having the mind of Christ and walking as Christ. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. And time's well done. But if we're going to take up the rights and the privileges of the new creature in Christ, we need to make ourselves available. I want to speak to anybody that may be watching by some other means. If you have watched this message today, and you're not yet born again of the Spirit of God. If you're dependent on a religious ritual to take you to heaven, you're not going to heaven. The only way to heaven is Jesus Christ. Call upon him. 
If you want to call upon Jesus today, just repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart. Not half-heartedly, but wholeheartedly. Lord Jesus Christ, I repent of all my sins. I'm calling upon you and asking you to be my Savior. I'm asking you to come into my heart and rule and reign. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God. You are the only Redeemer. You're the only Savior. So I'm believing you now and I'm receiving you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. If you have prayed that prayer, let us know. Let Audrey know that we would know what God's doing. We're not after your money. We're not interested in your money. God meets every need in this church. If you've got a need in your prayer, a need in your body today, just believe God. Father God, I ask you, Lord, for these people today. Lord, that's calling upon you. We ask you, Lord, that you will touch them and heal them from head to toe. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I cast out every spirit of infirmity. And I loose them, Lord, to receive the healing touch of the Master's hand. So, Father God, I praise you. Lord, I'm listening to miracles in their situations today. I'm listening needs to be met, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father God, I pray that your name will be uplifted. Your name will be glorified. And Father God, I pray for every family and family circle represented in this house today. Father, I'm believing you for household salvation. I'm believing you, Lord, for health and strength. And Father, by faith in my Lord Jesus Christ, by faith in that final sacrifice, that she had blood, I apply that precious blood around the borders of every one of our nerves, around every vehicle that we travel on. And I praise you, Lord, for the protection of the precious blood of Jesus. So, Father God, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. And shout it, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God.